Are we living in the roaring 20s? How many people at the time would have predicted during the war slash pandemic slash recession slash depression years that the 1920s would be one of the most innovative, prosperous periods our country had ever seen? The 1920s ushered in the automobile, the airplane, the radio, the assembly line, the refrigerator, electric razor, washing machine, jukebox, television and more. There was a massive stock market boom and explosion of spending by consumers the likes of which were unrivaled at the time. After the immense pressure of the Great War, many people simply wanted to have fun and spend money. Fed's operating losses swelled to record $114.3 billion in 2023. Bloomberg, the Federal Reserve's expenses exceeded its earnings in 2023 by $114.3 billion, its largest operating loss ever, forcing the U.S. Central Bank to forego remittances to the Treasury as interest rates remain elevated. Interest expenses, which includes reserves balances at the Fed's reverse repo operations, nearly tripled to a $281.1 billion in 2023, according to audited financial statements released Tuesday. Meanwhile, the Fed's interest income earned on its portfolio of assets totaled $163.8 billion last year, compared with roughly $170 billion in 2022, late central bank comments. Since I am still chugging away with edits, I have not been spending much time watching developments in markets. I just wanted to off some brief comments on events from central banks last week. I have a longer manuscript section for publication later this week. The Bank of Japan threw in the towel on negative interest rates last week. Yay, yen interest rates will go back to their low positive normal. This change is not that significant, other than on a psychological basis. I have not been following Japanese data closely, but my tendency is to expect glacial changes in economic conditions. Weakness in U.S. investment keeps the focus on the consumer. Durable goods orders are a good lead indicator for broader capex spending in the U.S. Unfortunately, ongoing weakness here suggests investment spending will remain a constraint on overall growth with the U.S. 2024 economic prospects being determined by the consumer. Investment has lagged behind other parts of the economy. The U.S. economy beat expectations throughout 2023, thanks primarily to the strength of consumer and government spending growth while net trade also made a positive contribution. What happens to U.S. activity and inflation if China's property sector leads to a crisis? A previous post explored the potential implications for U.S. growth and inflation of a manufacturing-led boom in China. This post considers spillovers to the U.S. from a downside scenario, one in which China's ongoing property sector slump takes another leg down and precipitates an economic hard landing and financial crisis. China's policy space is becoming more constrained. In this scenario, Chinese authorities' policy space proves insufficient to forestall a deep and protracted downturn. Our view is that this scenario is less likely to materialize than the upside scenario described in our previous post. We share the consensus view that the Chinese authorities retain considerable scope for managing the economy and associated financial risks. Thank you.